What's up everybody, it's Realistic with Realistic Productions doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and what I'm going to go over today is kind of an extension of a tutorial that I did in the past uh, in the mastering video, if you saw that, if you remember towards the end I said that I'm going to do a tutorial that focuses on a special technique and it's using deessers on your master channel to eliminate uh, resonant frequencies and the reason why I didn't touch on that in the mastering video is because uh, not every song is going to call for it the song that I was mastering in that particular video didn't call for it and it's not something that you want to use every single time you want to use it um, you know with some restraint because otherwise if you do it for songs that don't require it, you're going to ruin the song but basically what we're going to do is we're going to throw some deessers on the master channel and it's going to kind of work as a uh, very narrow band uh, compression and the, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through it and I'm going to just explain it and just kind of show some different problem areas to look out for. All right, so I got Pro Tools open up, but like I always say, these techniques will work in any DAW of choice. And if you haven't already, feel free to open up your DAW if you have the capability and do this along with me. You'll find that you're going to learn way more if you do it with me. And so what we're doing today is we're just going to go through a couple different things with uh, using DSers to eliminate different resonant frequencies within our master channel now this one is such a sleeper and I know at first it doesn't seem super exciting but this is really gonna come through on the clutch and I really think that this is a, a useful tool I use it all the time and I use deessers because I'm able to do a much more narrow band of compression than I would if I had a multi-band compressor you see I'm kind of limited right here to just how narrow I can get so I like to be able to use these DSers because I can really get nice and narrow in on the stuff here I can get as wide and narrow as I want so that's why we're going to use that and like I said this is really going to come through when you need it this is a song that I'm mastering here I really like this song it's a song I mastered over the summer I thought the mix engineer did a pretty good job for the most part but I wanted to use this one I remember there was a few parts where the there was some frequencies just really resonating through pretty hard I didn't do it on the first mastering tutorial that I did because that song I was mastering, the mix engineer did a really good job of eliminating resonant frequencies in the mix. And that's exactly what you should do as a mix engineer, but that's not always the case. So if you're mastering and you notice it, you can use some of these techniques to be able to solve the problem. We're just going to go through this a little bit and I'm going to bypass my plugins that I use to eliminate the resonating frequencies and we'll just give this a listen real quick. Yeah, so it's a lot of stuff in the, the low end that's happening. There's a little bit in his vocals. And I'm just going to kind of show you what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to pull up an EQ and we're just going to boost these frequencies of where it's really resonating and then I'm gonna solo the frequency out so you can really hear what what I'm hearing here so you can hear that's really uh kind of almost distorts the sub frequencies are starting to distort and be overwhelming especially when i zero it out so we're looking to eliminate stuff like that and i'll show you a couple other parts of it and you can hear it in in different areas again it's almost like uh it's distorting So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using deessers to eliminate some of that and compress it down. And why I use deessers to eliminate a lot of resonant frequencies is because I'm able to do a very narrow band of compression that I'm not always able to do with a multi-band compressor. So that's why I like to use deessers because I'm able to really just get narrow as you can see here and here. And it lets me just zero in on the problem 
frequencies. So let's just go through it and I'll kind of walk you through it. And another reason why I like to use DSers is because I can zero out the frequencies too and, and just listen to that. So one that I really like to use for the low frequencies is the suppressor by Sonex here. And I use that because I'm able to get uh, really low in the frequency range not a lot of DSers let you get there uh, i'm able to go from 20 to 20k i really like fab filter stuff but i'm only able to get down to about 2k with uh, the DSer. so i actually only use this when i'm trying to eliminate the vocal res so let's uh let's kind of dive in and see what we can do here and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using the audition mode or on sonex it's called the inside mode for me to be able to really hear it and we're just going to compress the frequencies down once we find where the problem area is so let's listen to this area of the chorus and see what we can fix in some different areas and you see i got about four of them open up i remember there was about four problem areas that i had to really duck down on this so let's check it out uh, baby. Okay, so that's definitely an area that should be fixed. It, it was 114, so the range we're getting is 106 to 122 hertz. So let's go back to our EQ and listen to what about 114 would sound like if we just boosted that and heard what that sounded like. No, babe. So yeah, you can hear where the how much it was really starting to distort and become overpowering. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come out of this and we're going to do some gain reduction so it compresses that area down. And what I usually try to do is I try to do anywhere from negative three to negative six, depending on how brutal the frequency that was resonating through is, just to push it down a little bit when it comes through. Baby, throw it like a fucking time so, Fell in love with your body off that You could make a lot of money off that Three in a million in cash Three in a million in cash Three in a million in cash Three yeah, so I bypassed in and out of that a little bit too so we could hear the difference. Uh, let's continue on. I remember there was an area around about 200, and let's see if we can fix that. Same concept, we're going to go on our inside mode so we can really just hear those frequencies. And what we're trying to listen for is things that distort and just become overwhelming. If, if you notice, when we do this, when we zero frequencies out like that, all of it's going to not sound good, but what we're looking for is it distorting. So I'll kind of give you an example here of when we do that here. See, this isn't too bad. You know, it doesn't sound awesome, but it's not distorting. Now, if I move over... we start to hear it distort there a little bit. And so that's what I'm listening for. I'm not listening for if it sounds bad or not, because it's all going to sound bad when you zero out. I'm listening for if it's going to distort or not. All right, so let's go back to our DSer over here and listen for this 200 to 240 range. I remember hearing some issues there too. A lot of times you'll find that in a lot of local hip hop and R&B. There's a nasty little bump up there that you usually want to try to avoid. Yeah, so that's at uh, about 206 to 248, and what's really kind of the issue there is the lower part of his voice is starting to interfere with the kick drum and the bass at the same time, so that's why we want to avoid that. So I'll zero out and let you hear what uh, that frequency sounded like on that area. Like a fucking time drum. Me. 
right? So that's the area that we're trying to eliminate right there. And just it's pretty rough. It just really kind of muddies up the mix. So what we want to do now is just kind of eliminate that. Let's duck down a little bit and see what we can do to fix that. Uh, baby, throw it like a fucking time. So, fell in love with your body off that. You could make a lot of money off that. Three in the mean of cash. 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 And I wanna slide. I wanna slide. Yeah, so now things are starting to be able to cut through a little bit more. The leads are able to cut through, and the voice is cutting through a little bit better, and kind of the attack of the kick drum is showing through a little bit more too. So those are all good things. And there's another area. We're hearing a lot of it in the low end. And again, that's going to be typical for a lot of trap and hip-hop music that you hear more at the local level. Just a lot of guys are just kind of doing stuff in their rooms and stuff. And so you just want to be able to you know look out for these things because a lot of times guys will boost this area not knowing that maybe they shouldn't boost that because the fundamentals aren't always here for your kick drum it's usually more down in 90 hertz but for whatever reason a lot of times people want to boost in that 110 to 180 range and it, that can really muddy up your mix quick so let's check out this area and see if we can fix some areas in there So now I'm going to go to the EQ, kind of show you what's happening there is it's the kick drum and the bass line are starting to clash together now. So let's go ahead and I'll boost that so you can hear what I'm, I'm hearing over here. So that's what I'm trying to get rid of right there is, is that frequency that was happening. So let's compress that down and try to ease up on that. Uh, baby, throw it like a fucking time so, Fell in love with your body off that You could make a lot of money off that Three in the mean of cash Three in the mean of cash yeah, I think the the bass, the lower frequencies are starting to sound a lot better. And if you want to know how to zero in and out of this uh, or uh, make this wider or narrower on this plugin, you just hold down in this area, hold your mouse down, click, and it just move up and down and it, it will help you choose the width of your band there. All right, so last thing I want to do is his vocals. I remember, especially in the verses, there was some areas that were really just resonating through a little bit too much it got a little harsh uh, i know i got a tutorial on how to eliminate vocal res in the mix and that's kind of what i'm going to be doing so i'm going to go back to fab filters pro ds i really like this in the higher frequencies because i really like how prominent the audition mode is it, it really just shows a lot of things off and if you're using this ds right here for eliminating vocal reses on a master channel i would highly suggest to use all around versus single vocal because it's not always going to catch it on single vocal when it's on a full master channel but all around it's going to catch it and uh it's going to duck down what we need it to so let's go ahead and listen to that if you remember from my vocal res video this is always a really hard harsh frequency so just keep that in mind when i'm about to do this make sure you watch your ears Light your souls, baby, do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how and only LA you with the stars, do you understand? Yeah, so there's just a little bit of harshness coming through on there, so let's kind of duck down on that a little bit. Light your souls, baby, do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how and only LA you with the stars, do you? Light your souls, baby, do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how and only LA you with the stars, do you? So in this 2.6 to 3K range, that's where I'm really hearing it. I'm just going to sweep this around a little bit so you can hear the difference because I know it all sounds bad in audition mode, but what we're really listening for is that really harshness where it just distorts too much, and that's what we're trying to duck out. So it's the worst at this area, and when I sweep through, you'll see that it's not as bad in other areas. See, that's not too bad there. It's okay there. Yeah, 
with the stars. See, that's the area where it's really becoming an issue. So let's go out of audition mode and let's give that a listen and, and see what we got to do for there. And I'll show you again on the EQ what uh, what we're really trying to get rid of here. Light shows, baby. Do you want to see the month? See, it's just a, a really harsh area, and it's a little just too much coming through. So let's duck down on that. Light shows, baby. Do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how in only L.A. you with the stars. Do you? Light shows, baby. Do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how in only L.A. you with the stars. Do you? Light shows, baby. Do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how in only L.A. you with the stars. Do you? Light shows, baby. Do you want to see the Mars? Ironic how in only L.A. you with the stars. And I don't know if you were able to notice, but when I came in and out, when this de was applied on, everything else in his voice was starting to pop through on the mix a lot better. Uh, it allowed the prominent frequencies and the important frequencies of his voice to really showcase a lot better. And then we started to get rid of some of that harshness. So let's also go back and uh, listen to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bypass in and out of all my de here so you can hear the difference of what we did today. And if you are a Pro Tools user uh, and you're wondering how I'm doing this where I'm just bypassing a chain of plugins, if you're on a Mac, you just hold down Control and, and you click and it it will bypass everything below the top plugin that you clicked on and so you can do that for your whole chain or you can just do it on a series of plugins so it's nice to be able to a b in and out and if you hold down option control and click it'll do it for everything within the session so it's just nice to kind of a b of what you're doing for processing and stuff if you're using other DAWs too that's okay too but uh, since I'm using Pro Tools I figure I'd just jump in and show you some of the quick commands that I'm doing within Pro Tools too, just in case that's the DAW that you use. So yeah, we'll go in and out, and we'll just hear the difference of what's going on here. Baby, throw it like a fucking tantrum Fell in love with your body off that You could make a lot of money off that Three in a million in cash 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 And I wanna slide I wanna slide all right, so I just made a couple adjustments there, too. It's always good to go back and see if you need to make any adjustments. And so I just eased up on it a little bit. But hopefully you're able to just hear the difference and see how things uh, were able to be a little bit less muddy. We cleaned up the mix. And I think it's a really useful tool for when you're mastering. So just keep that in mind. So hopefully you're able to find this video useful, be able to get some new techniques out of this. And basically what we did was we just put some de on the master channel and we used it kind of more as a narrow band uh, compressor to be able to compress some resonating frequencies down. That way they weren't rattling the speakers and creating a bunch of muddy sounds in the mix and not overtaking the mix. And you know, it's a trick that can definitely help out and it's a trick that people use a lot in mastering to kind of help the mix be able to really stand out more without these uh, resonating frequencies taking over. So, uh, you know, as I always say, if you're liking these videos, uh, but you want to see some different content, feel free down in the comment section to let us know what kind of content you want to see in the future. Oracle and I are always looking for new tutorials and new stuff to give you guys, and it helps to hear your feedback and what you want to see. And like I always say, if you're liking these videos, please find me on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me on the web, realisticproductions.net. And as always, if you're in there, if you're making beats, if you're doing production, whatever you're needing uh, any type of dope sounds for, go to soundoracle.net. You're going to find a bunch of dope sounds in there. Super dope kick drums, 808s, melody loops. They're all there. And if you're liking everything that you're hearing on there, you can find Sound Oracle everywhere on social media at Sound Oracle. All right. Till next time.